everyone, this is Holly. I joined the Soap Challenge Club again this month to revisit an older technique called the Column Pour. You'll find links and other information listed in the description box below, and if you're interested in the recipe I used, I'll show it at the end entered into a soap calculator. Soap making involves the use of sodium hydroxide, or lye, which can cause severe burns and permanently damage your eyes. So be sure to wear protective gear and always follow lye safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process, even when cleaning up. My color palette for this soap was white, black, and pink. For the white, I dissolved some water-soluble titanium dioxide in warm distilled water. For the black, I prepared some activated charcoal by mixing equal parts charcoal and sunflower oil. This ratio is a bit thicker than my usual one part charcoal to two parts oil, but I find it incorporates just as easily and means less oil added when I color the soap. For the pink, I hydrated some rose kale and clay with just enough distilled water to make it fluid. I usually hydrate clays just to make them easier to incorporate later without a lot of blending, which can accelerate trays. I also prepared a little indigo root powder by mixing it with sunflower oil. When I'm using pink clay, I sometimes like to add a little dark blue for a more purplish pink color. I blended the oils and lye for only a short time initially, just well enough to divide the batch into different parts. For this technique, I wanted the soap to stay at a light medium trace during the entire pour, so I didn't want to blend too much at this stage and cause the soap to trace too quickly. I roughly divided the soap into three parts, about 60% for the white, 25% for the black, and 15% for the pink. To create the black soap, I added one teaspoon of the charcoal oil per cup of soap. As I added the colorants and fragrance to each portion, I used my mini blender, watched carefully for emulsion and trace, and then attempted to get them to a light medium trace all at the same time. This can be a bit tricky working with different colorants that can affect trace, so I just took my time and didn't hurry the process. If you need help recognizing trace, be sure to check out the links below this video. For the pink soap, I added about one quarter teaspoon of the pink hydrated clay, and five drops of the indigo root oil to half a cup of soap. Finally, for the white, I used one half teaspoon of the hydrated titanium dioxide per cup of soap. I find incorporating the titanium dioxide this way allows me to blend it in really well, which prevents white specks in the finished soap, and also allows me to control trace more easily. Thank you. 
With my column pour, I wanted to create perfect circles using the smallest column possible so I wouldn't have a large muddy area in the center when I lifted it out. I ended up using my smallest 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and it worked really well. Whatever you use, just be aware that this soap will make it very slippery when it's time to lift it out. I did oven process this soap as I normally do. I wanted to make sure the soap went through gel phase so the colors would be dark and vibrant and also so I could unmold the soap a bit sooner. I removed the soap the next morning about 18 hours later and was able to unmold and cut it that afternoon. Since this was a cold process soap, I made sure the type of lye was set to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight for this batch was 900 grams. I used a lye concentration of 35%, which means my lye solution contained 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% water. 
If you'd rather not use that much of a water discount, you can set your lye concentration to 33% or even 31%. I left the super fat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 30 grams per kilogram. This recipe does contain lard, so I'll show you an alternative recipe following this one. Once you have everything entered, you can just calculate the recipe, then select to view or print it. You'll get a really nice listing of all your ingredients, along with the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making, and as always, thank you so much for taking time to watch my videos.